Yeah. And this is not a spring chicken today for our cans daily for May 22nd. The thing we're going to start off with first is the quote of the day, which is, Will he live, will he die? As a director, we hope that the spectator will write his own story according to his philosophy, which means, like we, like we said, this is the second time we've done this, folks. That, that it means that they don't have an ending for the movie. And that movie was for? This was J.C. Shandor. It, it, it was for Robert Redford's one-man show, and uh, we go way down, uh, all is lost. Mm. And we talk to people, as we said the first time, that what happened was, this happens a lot when you don't have a real ending. I worked for Poverty Road Pictures in the 1940s uh, as a young person, and they, they used stock footage from other companies, so they really didn't have scripts. They'd, use, they'd write it, they'd make a script to go with the, movie, the stock footage they had, and they literally had a dartboard, and they'd throw a darts and out, whatever it hit, that ended it. Didn't even make any difference that any relation to the movie. That's how they ended the movie, folks. Mm -hmm. So the actors expected to be in cans today are, these are some of the new people, we'll tell you some of the old ones, older ones too, Jason Avalos, Adrian Brody, Jessica Chastain, that's entirely new. Matt Damon and Mike, Matt Damon and Michael Douglas are producing, they're kicking the daylights out of their movie, they're everywhere trying to push that movie. Yes, the Candelabra movie, or actually would you just say the Liberace movie? Yeah. Okay, also Richard Dreyfuss is still there. Yeah. Um, James Gray. Yeah, an English actor. Rob Lowe's still there? Yeah, well, no, Rob Lowe is in the movie with um, uh, Blood, 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 Blood Tide, I think. Oh, with Ryan Gosling, right? No. Or that's, or that's a James Caan movie. That's a James Caan movie okay. with, uh, with Clive Owen. Uh, Mila Jovovich is there. Yeah. Um, who else is there? Eva Longoria was making the news yesterday. I don't know if she's still there. Oh, she wore a transparent outfit yesterday. With they basically, you could see her black underwear. She wore silk panties and bra this time. So. Well, they said they told her she was told to wear underwear because it was raining, so she was lifting up her dress a wee bit too high. Yeah, way too bit. Which the photographer's got some priceless pictures. Yeah, really. I mean, the picture. Well, I, I've never posed nude for a magazine, so she posed with her with no panties on. For well, she wasn't clothes. thinking about it. She was. I know. But uh, we have uh, Joaquin Phoenix and Jeremy Reiner are there. And uh, we got Jackie Stewart is there. Jackie Stewart is basically in a, there's a movie about Jackie Stewart that is, I think it's in on something regarded. And then we got mm -hmm. one, we got the big one, the, the, the last one there. Oh, oh Dita Montes? Yeah, she basically did her strip act last night and ended up in a thing full of champagne, so. Oh, and Mickey Beach, talk about having fun. In my day, they used to actually give the champagne to the people after the girls were in it, so I don't know if they do that anymore. So, but now we got Cannes Classic, which folks should I tell people the second time, we've done this, this is our second time, that I was in, I was in Cleopatra, and I got, this is what I did in Cleopatra. That's when I wasn't riding a horse, I did. Now this is one of those classics I would like to see, I've seen uh, um, clips from this, but for one thing, this is, it has been restored to 4K, can you believe that? Now, to achieve this feat, it took two years of work and 50 people working on it. And when it was released in 1963, I love this, it says, it had a $44 million budget, thousands of extras, two directors in succession, and an extramarital affair between Hollywood stars Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor. The diva, whose wardrobe cost him $194,800. But we also, no, it, went, no, it way, was way over budget. Way over, because what I was in, I was in scenes that were being shot here with, um, uh, Elizabeth Taylor and then the cavalry shots that were being shot here and I would get in the middle of the night my grandmother would call the phone they need you tomorrow and I I did that they need to do it over again and then the next night uh, you know like about four in the morning they need you in two hours do what they're going to reshoot it all over again mm -hmm. and then the next day I know they're going to reshoot it all over again this is what was this was you know basically we we're beginning to go Mm -hmm. If you look closely, you can see there's shots where, and then there's shots where, you know, there are people getting tired of doing, they do it the Reshoots same and over and over. And the, uh, 44 million, I think maybe 120 million, which is like 500 million now. And that was in 1963. Yeah. I mean, this was... It was really, really expensive movie. movie. They just, they just stopped counting out the, at the original budget. They, basically the film, I don't think it's ever made its money back. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. like $194,000 in wardrobe. Uh, that was for uh, mostly, uh, okay, the, uh, most of that was Elizabeth Taylor, I think. 
because um, yeah, they're saying that was her wardrobe. Yeah, yeah, because it was. Uh, and then, the seats had a lot of people in them, though. Yeah, well, because what happened was Elizabeth Taylor basically she had, depending upon the time, uh, you know, basically she was a little bit heavy, a little bit light, a little bit heavy, a little bit light, and trying to get the clothes to remain the same. So and then it changed oh. the costume so many times. I mean. Well, she was Cleopatra. I know. But uh, it's it's supposed to have a massive wardrobe. I know. Basically, it, 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 it's still one of the most beautiful American... Um, Peplo? Peplo that was... A, 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 one of the most beautiful American people. Well, Peplo must be a word I don't know. That was immortalized Elizabeth Taylor as the misunderstood love-sticking queen of Egypt. The Mac was transformed the life of Cleopatra from a mere history lesson to a Shakespearean tragedy. She's a woman divided between her uh, desire for recognition and her desire for love, basically. The, the 20th Century Fox was actually involved in the reading. Oh. The, First, the studio cleared the original negative before digitalizing them. A second restoration, the most important, was then done by computer on the digital version, which made it possible to restore the film's original palette of colors, eliminate the imperfections, and turn back the ravages of time. I have a suspicion that that word, I can't figure, Pepla? Pepla is, a mis uh, is basically palette. Mm -hmm. One of the most beautiful American palettes. Palettes or people? No, palettes. Pepla. Because if you watch down here, it says palettes too. Uh, original palette of colors. Oh. It was a very beautiful film, so. Of which somebody forgot to put Roddy McDowell in for Best Supporting Actor. It was his shot and they totally forgot Oh, it. they did? Yeah. Um, Kate Burton, Richard Burton's daughter, and Chris Wilding, the son of Elizabeth Taylor, will attend the screening in Cannes. Um, so they're there yeah. um, to appreciate the extraordinary precision of the restoration team. Although this is the first time that Cleopatra has been presented in Cannes, its director, Joseph Minkowitz, came to the festival twice. The first was in 1949 for the House of Strangers, and then in 1951, the year that All About Eve won a special jury prize. Yeah, if you want to know more about Joseph L. Mankiewicz, go, go, go to Benji, Ma Benji Mankiewicz. Is, is he related to Ben Mankiewicz? The, yeah, he, the, he, he's like the grandson. Uh, oh, we got a, we got Michael Douglas in the press conference for... Uh, uh, this is after the candle, behind the candelabra. Yeah, okay. we got the press conference yesterday, we talked about the movement. Um, well, Michael Douglas says, Stephen gave me the gift of this incredible role. Yeah. So... Uh, I, I uh, you see, like I met him. Okay, like uh, this was this, uh, this. You know, he led an extraordinary life. There was just the secret of his homosexuality. There was a lot of women in his audience, and they were all in love with him, which made him coming out. He never came out. Not that I. Well, wait. Remember. Here's the here's the other part: is you lived during that time. Oh, I never. He, Liberace he, had women around him all the time. Liberace uh, was, you know, you know, he, 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 he was a showman. Like we said yesterday, he wasn't. He didn't start out flamboyant. What happened was, his his black tux jacket got messed up at the Hollywood Bowl. He needed to go on, so he took. He got had a white jacket. He put it on, and it got such a big. He basically made a joke about his jacket. You like? He did his thing. You like this? And he explained about it, and people were hysterical. And the next time he came out with more, he came out with like a country tux, and they loved it. And it, he would come out with something more flamboyant every time. You know, sometimes some things weighed a couple hundred pounds. The guy was as strong as an ox because he would come out and dance in costumes that these big showgirls would die in. So. And Jerry Weintraub says, I'm the only one old enough at this table to have known him personally. He led an extraordinary life, and there was just the secret of his homosexuality. There was a lot of women in his audiences, and they were all in love with him, which made him coming out difficult at, um, at the time. Actually, it was difficult for anybody to come out. Yeah, like I said, Especially Michael Douglas met him when he was 12. They, they didn't, the garage never came out. There was no such thing as coming out in those days. Mm. Basically, uh, the, uh, Michael Douglas' and dad, uh, Kurt Newman, basically, he was wearing so much jewelry that it sparkled his son. He, he was the predecessor of people like Elton John, yeah. Well, here's the fun part is, is I met Liberace's jeweler. Yeah. Um, who made his jewelry, and he actually made a diamond piece for my mother. Yeah. Because Dad went to the fat farm with him. Yeah, I mean, I'd met him. <laughs> Basically, I met I had met Liberace earlier on his TV show and never actually met him. He was very nice and said, oh, the only time I got to work with Liberace was on the Hollywood Palace because I was doing background singing with a 
with a rock group that was on, and Liberace was hosting a show, and he come, comes out, you know, and then you, can you, they said, the guy, can you introduce the people behind you? And, and then, oh, and then he said, he went like this, and I, I <laughs> yeah, he remembered everybody, so. Oh, he did? Yeah, so I, the maid sort of stepped on, the things are real scripted, and he goes, oh, hi. So. <laughs> well, and here's one thing I didn't know. This is by Michael Douglas. It was just after my cancer, and Stephen gave me the gift of this incredible role. I am very grateful to the whole team for waiting for me. Yeah. So apparently they've been working on this for a while, and they waited for Michael Douglas. I, I can swear I I can remember Steven Sonnenberg as an actor before he was a director producer. Mm -hmm. uh, that that IMDb has a tend to change history, folks. We know people that have been married for 14 years that no longer have families. So. Uh, Matt, this is the seventh time with Matt Damon working with him. During the filming, he went even further than usual from a technical point of view. He created a website that allowed the, the team to follow filming in real time. And in the evening, I could see all the results. Basically, that's the future of filmmaking, which is digital, so the actors. Um, I can remember uh, when I was working, I never actually saw myself ever unless I went to the movie theater or saw it on television, which is why I spent a lot of time watching Turner Classics and the Western Channel. Our military because it's the only time I've ever seen myself. And this is the quote here that I'm surprised has not really hit the wires. And that is, this is from Matt Damon, I want a break. I can't say if it's my last film or not. <sighs> right? Yeah. Behind the Candelabra has a direct link with my first film. They both talk about people living in their own world. In terms of style, I think I've made some progress. My mise-en-scene, mis you can always say it better than me, is clearer and more direct than at the time at the time. Okay. My miss on scene. This, um, I think, is Son, uh, Sonnenberg, not... Not Matt Damon? Matt Damon. There's something missing. I think I've heard him talking about this, whether Sonnenberg wants a break from... Um, he, okay. Remember Maybe. yesterday we were talking about it. He wants a break from producing and, and doing this stuff. So I think what happens is they left something out. I think okay. this is Sonnenberg. Because I'm see, sitting there thinking, if that was Matt Damon saying that, you'd think it'd be all over the news. Yeah, we got the, we got a special screening, though, of uh, Robert Redford and J.C. Candor's Castaway production. So. And J.C. Candor is at cons for the first time out of competition to present his second feature film, All is Lost, the history of a castaway which charts the struggle of a man played by Robert Redford faced with the ocean and himself. Doesn't that sound like that movie that Tom Hanks was in? Yeah, An Old Man in the Sea by Steinbeck. Uh, I know Ernest Hemingway wrote Old Man in the Sea, so he's playing an old man in the sea, and he's playing a castaway old man in the sea. So can we get he, a volleyball? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's what it amounts Wilson. to. Wilson, remember Tom Hanks? Yeah, Wilson. What it amounts to is that when you want to show that you're really good at what you do, you basically do a one-man production, and this is okay. more or less what this is. So that is Redford wants that it. Oscar for Best Actor. He knows now they're starting to reward people for lifetime achievement. In Margin Call, a small film which made big waves first brought J.C. Shandor into the spotlight. The feature film on the world of finance and traders garnered around $20 million and world box office takings for a budget of $3.5 million. Going on to win an Oscar nomination for Best Screenplay, um, this initial success subsequently opened up a rich seam of opportunities. Yeah, because we also, I was at uh, Lawrence, um, Alexander Payne has got a movie in Nebraska that we've seen Alexander, we've talked to Alexander Payne and George Clooney. His movie is Nebraska with um, with Bruce Dern, so that small movies sometimes really do well if yeah. you get the right people in them. Mm -hmm. And part of it is there's a lot of people that would love to see Robert Redford. You don't see an opportunity for him to act. Well, in, but mostly it's because stuff. he's aging. He's, he spent too much of his life out in the sun and has not aged well. This is before they sat there and talked about wearing sunblock and everything. Yeah. This is where you put the oil on yourself so you can get a, a tan faster. Yeah, well, look, he's a, he's a skier and he never wore, he still doesn't wear hats, I don't think, mm -hmm. when he skis and it shows up in his face because uh, his, he, he was all about, because I worked with Redford on the Untouchables in the 1950s before he supposed it was actually working. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he actually, Robert Redford, he was also an episode of Twilight Zone, folks, which people tend to forget, and an important episode with Gladys George, mm -hmm. so. But um, basically, the director sees this film as a very simple story that of a man of advancing years who takes off on a four or five month journey in a sailing boat. As fate has it, his boat is damaged in an accident, and then we witness his struggle for living. So, um, we got uh, 
basically, uh, basically he's out of competition with Robert Redford, his only actor. The, he's the only actor in there? Yeah, it's one man. Even in the other ones, there are a few other ones. It's a tour de force, so. Oh, wow. Um, but sometimes when they say only actor, I can remember, I did a movie called High and the Mighty, which they said that there was, you know, this is the first movie John Wayne has ever did with no women in it. No women all over the place. It's just, they just somehow ignore him. My guess is there's people in this movie, but it's- Well, it does, he does say, in here it said, on his main actor. Yeah. Because I thought before it was a, the only it, actor. Yeah, it's probably, I would assume there'd be people when he was getting ready to go out in the boat unless the thing starts in the water. And this is Robert Redford on his performance. He said it's a very big challenge being alone, with no crutch, no dialogue, no words. It's a challenge that attracted me a lot as an actor. I wanted to give myself entirely to a director. I trusted him so much that I couldn't just let myself go. That I could just let myself go. I gave myself up completely. So there's no dialogue. Yeah. And no words. Remember that we were talking the guy from the Life of Pi. Mm -hmm. He didn't have anybody in. He's sitting there in a in the middle of a of swimming what amounts to a swimming pool in a boat that really didn't exist with no one to talk to and he's basically talking to animals that weren't there. Mm -hmm. So that's called that's called acting folks. Mm -hmm. So JC Chandor on his main actor. I saw Robert Redford at Sundance during a conference. I was sitting at the back of the room but I could hear his voice clearly as if he was only talking to me. Even though there were more than three hundred directors in the room, I told myself I had to ask him and straight away he said yes. Yeah, well, because Redford wants an Oscar. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, Rod, okay, on Silence. Believe, I, I believe uh, in the role of uh, Silence in the film, and because often we talk far too much since, uh, Silence allows you to really rule your role and force you to be totally trust the director. But we know Redford basically is a very quiet person, so with him it probably was not a challenge to be quiet. And Robert Redford, on the pace of the world today, um, the role of technology is constantly speeding things up. The pace of life is getting faster and the energy is fascinating. But how long will it last? This is the theme of the film because it is the opposite of what we are experiencing in today's world. We see time, a boat, and a man as opposed to all the noise we make in my country today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's a political statement, folks. Mm -hmm. But we have the role of music. In a silent movie, music plays an awful lot because we're going to Like in the artist? Because like when we were the artist, I sat with the people that made the artist at the screening. And I'm listening to one of the actors that was in the movie. He said, I didn't realize there was so much sound in the silent movie. Mm -hmm. There was sound everywhere in the silent movie, and people didn't understand it. So there's lots of sound in a silent. This is obviously a, uh, it's basically it's all acting, but there's got a lot of sound in it. And basically worked with an incredible musician for eight months. The music's important in the film. And it couldn't function without it. It comes in a crescendo and builds the spectator's trust. It enhances the story, which is what music is supposed yeah. to do anyway. Um, the music reflects the character's life and thanks to it, the spectator forms a bond with him. Basically, um, Shandor does not hide the influence of Hemingway and Hill Man to see in his screenplay. Boy, didn't I admit that. I hadn't read this until. I grew up among stunning boats. It's a world I know well. I wanted to make a thriller about the high seas for a very long time. A uh, few young filmmakers have a chance to work with an actor and stash of Robert Wentford. J.C. Sandler was lucky enough to meet him at Sundance where Margin Call was selected in the competition. Well, that's how he got to meet him because his movie was in competition. So mm -hmm. um, it was remarkable. No dialogue, even though it wasn't all spelled out in the black and white. I felt confident. I went in a, into it. My eyes. <laughs> I went into it. With my eyes closed. Which you should never do that. So. Oh, that was kind of, I went into it with my eyes closed. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Anyway, it's it's kind of I mean these these two films right here, if at least for American audiences, because they like Robert Redford. Yeah. Because of the Sundance. Well, they're going to get Robert. lots of Redford for a change, and Robert Redford trying to be he's trying. Actually, we were there, with, um, you know, um, in the movie. We were in the, at the premiere of the movie that Christopher Plummer won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor. They're actually favoring older actors mm -hmm. in roles at the moment, but starring roles is is a problem. They generally don't give a Best Actor award to a starring part, they give it to a character part to the co-star, even though you spent a lifetime being a star. So he's going to run against stiff competition, but I'm figuring that it's probably his Lifetime Achievement Award, so he could yeah. be the favorite to win the Oscar no matter what. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing this. 
I mean, all these three films, it's like, I still want to, I want to see Behind the Candelabra. We can go watch it on HBO. Yeah, we can watch it, yeah. Um, the Robert Redford movie, and definitely Cleopatra. I mean, Cleopatra, I'm curious of what, if you're going to get to see the director's cut, are you going to see the studio cut? There, there's an hour of difference in between the things, folks. The, the bigger version is a far better movie than the shorter version. So what, what happened was they cut a short refilm scene to make it tighten up, but it doesn't work as well. So I guess until the next time, this is all again. And this is Novice Spring Chicken. We're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow for more information. You can go to www.mbn, there's a video web on the net, or www.thetravelsuite.com, and the information is not the same on both sites. Yeah, so check it out, because see, we were talking about these movies today for Cannes. We've been following it since before Cannes started, so there's a lot of information out there. And, you know, a lot of these movies you're going to see, well, let's just say Oscar time. You'll be seeing them out. Um, you'll be seeing more releases on a lot of these. But meanwhile, come... Well, actually, wherever you are, subscribe to us, but like us on Facebook or friend us and follow us on Twitter at Monty Bubbles or at The Travel Suite. But come join us again on the website at mbnnewsvideoweb.com and thetravelsuite.com. Happy Cannes 20. <laughs>